Hello, welcome to our Holy Week devotional online. My name is Judith Reedy, Associate Pastor. I hope you find these daily readings from the Gospel of Luke and our reflections on those events in Jesus' last week meaningful as you move from the celebration of Palm Sunday to the cross and finally to today, Easter morning. Listen to these words from Luke 24, 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking to the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe it. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Easter morning, April 11, 2004, is indelibly stamped on my heart. The Wednesday before, April 7, my beloved father had drawn his last breath, surrounded by every member of his family, having had a long and wondrous phone conversation with his surviving younger brother the day before. The next day was Monday, Thursday, and the next, of course, Good Friday. My mother and sister and the rest of our family, with the blessing of my parents' pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Whitesboro, agreed that we would have my father's celebration of life on Holy Saturday. Two years before, my father, healthy and energetic, had been struck blind suddenly by giant cell arteritis. Shortly thereafter, he had invited me into his study and handed me a file from a desk drawer. He had typed out perfectly his entire celebration of life service, including all the liturgy and hymn selections, everything except the words of hope, which he then asked me to do. Over the years, as my father had attended a celebration of life service that was especially meaningful to him, that witnessed the hope that he embraced, he had kept that bulletin and marked a particular liturgy, hymn, or scripture that spoke of this hope. Four years before his blindness, he had a finished product. I began to read it. The call to worship was a celebration of life in Christ. So were the hymns. So were the scriptures. How was that life in Christ lived during his two years of blindness, through two Easter Sunday mornings? Where did he find hope? I discovered that he dreamed in color. In one dream, he was drafted by a professional baseball team as a pitcher and he had pitched a no-hitter. He had still managed to attend church, celebrations of life, and other gatherings for much of those two years. As always, he stood tall and straight, extending his hand out into the room, not thinking of whether it looked odd when he heard the name of someone entering his presence or being introduced to him for the first time. He would repeat their name and ask thoughtful questions. When he was finally unable to attend church in person, he stayed home while my mother attended church. What do you do during that time, Daddy? I try to envision the face of every person in that congregation, there were about a hundred, and call their name. How many can you recall? Usually, all of them. They were his beloved community. As I wrote the message for my father's service, I began to rewrite my sermon for Easter Sunday. It was, after all, the same message. As people of the resurrection, we would rejoice even as we wept that he was not to be found among the dead, but with the living. 
On cue, it seemed, the carillon at their church, just two doors down, began to play curiously on the morning of my father's service. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. He was and continues to be with each of us in myriad moments of time throughout our lives. So it is that on every Easter Sunday morning, having just wept at the tomb on Good Friday, in three days we find ourselves like Peter, stooping and looking in, amazed at what has happened. He is alive, thanks be to God. I hope your week will be a holy one. Take a few moments to reflect on your own feelings and experiences of the scripture. Each day's readings will be available right here. There's also a booklet available to you and an online version at fumcplano.org. May God bless you today as we journey together.